Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is Export to Azure Data Lake Overview. My name is Brad, and I'll be your moderator today. We're broadcasting this session through Teams Live events, and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. This session is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. When you join this event, your name, email address, and or phone number may be viewable by other session participants in the attendee list. By joining, you're agreeing to this experience. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout the presentation and during the Q&A segment near the end. Thank you for your, your patience during these announcements. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Rich Black. Rich, over to you. Thank you, Brad, for the introduction, and thank you very much to everyone in attendance today. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to this Tech Talk and provide an overview of the export to Azure Data Lake feature for finance and operations applications. I want also to thank my colleagues, Melinda, Jilla, Steven, Antoine, Sarov, and Sammy, all of whom will be presenting, participating, demonstrating, and answering questions during these Tech Talks. To accommodate multiple time zones and presenters, please note that some of the content has been pre-recorded. Now, before we get started, I want to very quickly share with you our Dynamics 365 implementation guide, which contains a wealth of information gathered from our collective experience across thousands of Dynamics implementations. Download it today from aka.ms slash D365 implementation guide for detailed insight into how your implementations can incorporate success by design. Today's agenda will begin with an overview of the feature Export to Azure Data Lake, and we'll then discuss and demonstrate the installation of the add-in in LCS. Then we'll look at the process of choosing data for export, and we'll move on to querying, transforming, and visualizing that data. Next, we'll address some common patterns as well as anti-patterns and we'll touch briefly on some important security considerations. And before we get to Q&A, we'll review current capabilities and the future roadmap in more detail. First, an overview of the Export to Azure Data Lake feature. The Export to Azure Data Lake is a service that's included with your subscription to Dynamics 365, and which lets you connect your finance and operations environment to a data lake to unlock insights that are hidden in your data. The feature is enabled by installing the export to Azure Data Lake add-in in LCS, which specifies parameters associated with your Azure storage account. This add-in enables a microservice that allows you to select data to be exported to that storage account. The service exports data periodically or optionally in near real time. We'll talk more about these capabilities later. There are several key advantages to this feature. The service manages the export process, so you don't have to invest a great deal of time managing or monitoring the exports. And there's no additional burden on your finance and operations workloads, so you needn't worry about the exports themselves adversely impacting performance elsewhere. Additionally, the cost of data storage in the lake is significantly reduced in comparison to relational databases. Selecting data to export is done via a simple interface that allows you to select data via tables. This means that you do not have to develop custom entities just to export data. But if you do have entities that contain data you want to export, you can also select that data for export by choosing the entities. The related tables are selected in the background by the tool based on your entity selection. Now data that's stored in the lake is organized in a folder structure that uses the common data model format. CDM format provides additional metadata in a machine-readable JavaScript object notation or JSON format so that downstream tools can determine the semantics of the data. These tools include modern data warehouse technologies such as Power BI, Azure Synapse Analytics, Azure Data Factory, Apache Spark, and more. Now, when you're adopting this feature, you can transition from things like BYOD without incurring major costs because it's possible for existing downstream consumption pipelines to be preserved in many cases. Currently, many of your existing reporting tools work directly with SQL databases, and they use T-SQL to read data. Now, you can also create a SQL Server endpoint for use in your lake 
by using Azure Synapse Analytics. Synapse includes SQL On Demand capability that enables Data Lake to be queried by using the T-SQL language. Your data integration pipeline might also be able to consume files in a data lake. Here are the steps required to get started with this feature with links to detailed instructions and additional information. First, note that the export to data lake add-in is generally available in the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, Europe, Southeast Asia, East Asia, Australia, India, and Japan at the time of this publication. If your finance and operations environment is in any of these regions, you'll be able to install the export and data lake add-in in it. Microsoft will enable this feature in additional regions in the future, so check this link here for additional information. Next, you'll need to configure the Azure resources in your subscription, including your Azure Active Directory application, your storage account, your key vault, and your secrets. Next, the add-in that enables the microservice is installed in specific environments. And during the installation process, you'll specify those Azure resources just mentioned. Once installed, you'll select data for export. And then the system will manage the export on an ongoing basis. Now be sure that you check out this GitHub link for templates and tools that you can use, such as CDM Util. And finally, you can join the Yammer group to stay in touch and ask questions that will help you understand the feature as well as upcoming improvements and enhancements. We'll get to a full demo here in a few moments, but first let's take a few quick glimpses of the screens involved in the steps that were previously described. First, the top two screenshots show the, the process of connecting a data lake to Dynamics 365. This is currently accomplished in LCS. You'll select a tier two or higher environment and configure the add-in with the settings for your storage account and key vault. Note that this configuration is stored in LCS, not in the environment's database. So this configuration is independent of any data refreshes that you might do. Next, after connection, you're gonna choose your data. Pictured here in the lower left is the simple interface in which you can select the tables. And as you can see pictured at right, you can also select the tables by browsing entities as described earlier. Once the data is selected, the export will be initialized. And once the initial copy is available, the system will manage the export going forward. The next step in building your solution will be to configure how you will consume the data. Again, we'll get to demos in a moment. But here's another glimpse, this time of what's being enabled by the screens and the steps that were previously discussed. Now on the left, we can see our traditional intelligence capabilities, including the existing library of SSRS reports, of course, everyone's favorite tool, Excel, the native controls contained in list pages and saved views, as well as embedded Power BI and electronic reporting. Our new microservice that we're talking about here today, the export to Azure Data Lake feature is in the green box. And as we've discussed, it provides an easy way to export data to your lake. On the previous slide, we saw uh, a quick look of the screens used to install the service and select the data. Once that data is exported to the lake, it's automatically organized in the CDM format along with various pieces of metadata, such as the entity shapes. And you can combine that with data from other sources, legacy databases, you name it. And you can unlock insights with any number of modern analytical tools and professional development tools. With these tools, you can turn your data into a competitive advantage by using Power BI and Azure together to connect, combine, and analyze your entire data estate. Power BI provides a unified, scalable platform for self-service and enterprise business intelligence that's easy to use and helps you gain deeper data insight. You can combine Power BI with Power Apps and Power Automate, to easily build business applications and automate workflows. Power BI dashboards help you quickly gather, analyze, publish, and share business data in new ways, including everyone's favorite, Excel. But with Azure Synapse Analytics, which allow you to perform data integration, data exploration, data warehousing, big data analytics, and machine learning tasks from a single unified environment, you can build your mission critical data warehouse on the proven foundation of the industry's top performing SQL engine with serverless and dedicated options. Support both data lake and data warehouse use cases and choose the most effective pricing option for each workload. You can easily use T-SQL queries on both your data warehouse as well as Apache Spark engines. 
and you can integrate Azure Machine Learning and Azure Cognitive Services. Or you can use literally most other tools of your choice. <laughs> Next, my colleague Antoine will kick off our demos and we'll begin with installing the add-in. Note, there are prerequisites for this step, which include having a Dynamics 365 sandbox that is a tier two or higher, and that you're a global admin user in your Azure tenant. Hi, as a first step, we're going to create service principle for Microsoft Dynamics ERP microservice. It's required to enable AT to authenticate the microservice. Now, how do we do this one? Well, we need to point first the application into the global enterprise applications list. We're going to select all applications on here, and we're going to find the application which we need, which is uh, Microsoft Dynamics ERP microservices. And what we need to note is the application ID on the right side. Now, we'll copy this application ID, and uh, we'll store it. So, as the next step, we need to install the Azure Management Module in PowerShell, so we can create the principle. And this will be done by getting and connecting to a PowerShell. We need to write it as administrator. Okay. And the first thing is to install the Azure AD module. Now, if you get asked about NuGet providers or untrusted repository, just answer yes. As a next step, we need to connect to the Azure AD. So you get asked about credentials and connection details, and you type your credentials. Right. Now successfully authenticated, we should be able to execute the commands to create the new Azure AD service principle. Now, if you have already created the principle, you'll get notification that it has been created already. And we're going to copy the application ID which we found earlier. So this is the notice where the principle has already been created. So this is okay. Now the next step is to create an application. And this will require to go through the Azure Active Directory and to create a new application registration. You go to the Azure portal, select Azure Active Directory and select the app registrations and select a new registration from the top. Enter the details. You can tell it something meaningful. And the first thing is we need to add API permissions. So to start with, we're going to copy the details of this application ID because we'll need them for future usage. Next thing is to generate a client certificate. And to do this one, you go through the client and certificate sections and click new client certificate. You will need to give it a name and expiration. And it's important to note that Secret ID details will disappear when you close this screen. So you need to save these details. Now this concludes uh, the registration of the application. So we'll move to the next bit to create the data like gentle. Now to this one, we're going back into the Azure main resource directory. And we're looking for storage accounts. And we're going to create one. So you need first to select your subscription ID. Okay. I'm going to create the storage account name, which is a new name. Again, something which explains what is it for. You need to select the region as the next step. Suggest it to it into the region where is your Dynamics ERP deployment and the performance tier as well. Yeah, the location is quite important because uh, it will have a direct implication on the performance of uh, the data exchange between Dynamics and the data lake. So as a next step, we need to go through the advanced section and you need to select this uh, data lake storage gen tool. The rest of the options are okay. And we go through the networking. Now on here, it is important to know that it needs to be public network. We are still working on the option about expanding to private endpoints. And you can click the create button on the bottom. So we have the completed notification and we're going to go to the resource. So as a next step, we are going to path the access control for the application, which we have created earlier. So to do this one, you need to go through the access control section and add role assignments for the application. This happens by the add button on the top and you select from there, add role assignment. 
And from here, we need to add two rows. One is the storage block data contributor. And the second one is the storage block data reader. So let's start with the contributor. So storage block data contributor in the list. And we need to find now the application which we have created earlier. And here is the application. So select the application and click the button to add the permission and the row assignment. Now this one is done. We need to repeat it again for the other row, which is the storage block data reader. So I'll do the same thing. We're going to check the permissions. And for this, I'm going to type the application name. Then click on the application and here yes, it looks good. As the next step, we're going to create the Azure Key Vault. And now, similar to the storage account, we need to populate the details and we need to put the resource group. Enter the Key Vault name, select a region. On the region, make sure you select the region where your Dynamics D365 application is deployed. Pricing tier is standard, it's OK. And we click the review and create button. Validation is uh, succeeded, so we can click the create button. Let's go to the resource itself. Now we'll take this DNS name from the main description on the overview top earlier. And after this one, we'll add a couple of secrets to the key vault. So we're going to select the secrets tab and generate a new secret. So we'll generate new one for all the three different types of secrets which we need. The first one is the application ID. And of the application ID, we are going to type the value which we had for our application ID and we know that earlier. We'll create this one. We'll add another application secret which is called app secret. And this one will be the application secret which we know that earlier. And we click create. And I'll add another secret now which is the storage account name. Okay, and click the create button. Okay, now we have the three secrets generated. So once we have the secrets, the next step is to authorize the application to read the secrets in the key vault. So this is done by the access policies in the key vault. So we select access policies and here we are going to up access policy on the template, which we're going to select uh, is going to be a service principle. On the service principle, we're going to select the one which we've created earlier for our Microsoft Dynamics CFB microservices. I'll select this one and I'll click the selection button and we need to select the permissions which we need. So now we need two permissions, get and list. So check that you have selected the get and list from the selected permissions and click the save button. We're saving permissions. Okay, it's all saved. Now the final configuration step is do from the LCS portal. On the page, we have uh, the standard environment details and we have this tab which is called Power Platform Integration. And from here we have the button which is link to Power Platform. So we need to click on this button and linkage and integration will be done automatically. Okay, so configuration is complete. And at this stage, we can start adding individual add-ins. I need to refresh the page to get um, the latest update. Page is now refreshed and I'm going to click on install a new add-in. From the list on the right side, I'm going to select export to data lake. Now here I need to populate some of the mandatory items. The first one is the Active Directory tenant ID. Now this one you can get from the key vault settings. So I'm going to go to my key vault, grab the directory ID and paste it into the settings. The next one is the DNS name of the key vault, which I'll copy again. And then I need to provide the secret names, which I have typed earlier. So the first one is going to get the storage account. So it will be this secret name itself. Copy this one based on the other side. Provide the secret application ID. and provide the secret that contains the application ID secret. And click install. Installation has been completed.
Thanks, Rich and Antoine. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah from Foster Team. All right. So far, we got the add-in installed successfully. Now the exciting part comes in. Depending on your business requirements or your solution strategy, you select the tables or entities you would like to push to the lake. And we'll also double-click into the Azure data link and explore its data there. Let's have a demo. Once you have opened your finance and operations environment, where you install the add-in, you can either go to system administration module, setup, and find the page for export to data lake, or you can search in the navigation bar lake, and then select the page for export to data lake. You will see two tabs here, one for tables and one for entities. On the tables tab, you will see all the standard tables as well as all the custom tables with their standard, with their system name. And also you can use the standard culture capabilities to filter the records here. You can select one or multiple records to activate or deactivate the sync with the data lake here. Please note, there is a limit of 200 tables to sync with the current GA version in the full export mode. By default, the status will be blank. You can select one or multiple records. Then you click either the activate button or the ask tables button. Both will do their sync to the data lake. Once the tables are activated, the system might show its status as any slide. And once the initial copy is completed, it will change the status to running it. Here, in compared to BYOD, there is no need to be concerned about creating the custom data entities. You set up the job, the scheduling, etc. All you need is to activate the required tables to export the data to the lake. Please note that there could be error status in the record, which you can see here through the filter status. To learn more about these error codes, there is a doc page for the same. Let's talk about the entities tab. If you aren't familiar with the specific tables that you require, you can select tables using entities. Once you select particular entity, then the system will show you all the tables in that particular data entity. You click on add table using entities, and which will bring those tables also into the data lake. Okay, the finance and operation cap configurations are done. We have selected what tables data we would like to sync to data lake. Now, how do we see this data in the lake? How does it look like in the row format? And how, how will we understand its structure or the, its data model? One of the easiest ways is via Azure portal. Here you get the storage account resource we created during installation. On the storage account, you can either use Azure Storage Explorer via Open in Explorer, or you can use storage browser preview feature to explore this data. For this demo, I will go with the browser option. From here, it's a hierarchical structure. After adding installation, this folder structure will be created in your layer. First, go to blob container, then look for the container name Dynamics 365 Finance and Operation. Under this container, you will see one or many folders. In further drill down, you will see more folders for their purpose. Here, tables will contain actual data in CSV format. Entities will contain entities CDM metadata. And change feeds that will contain the near real-time change data. At the environment folder, you will also see these manifest JSON, which keeps the what folders are getting things from the FNO environment. What you see here is the rich data structure as for FNO. There are folders and subfolders to keep data in a fine, organized way so that you can easily find a specific tables data that you are looking for. For example, I would like to find sales line data. So I will go to supply chain folder, then sales and marketing, and then I will find that table under worksheet line. There will be a folder for each table, so sales line, and you will see the data stored here in CSV format. Please note there will be a file of 200 MB maximum size each file in the blob size. Let's also look at the table specific CDM structure in the lake. Go to sales line CDM JSON file. And here you can see all the field names, their data type, their data description, and all the well for each field coming from your environment. The data structure component is truly strong in this feature with metadata service, which is currently in preview. With that, you will be able to get even richer metadata information from your FNO environment, not just the name, data, format, and description. 
This concludes the demo for tables, entities, configuration, and exploring data and its structure in the lake. Next, my colleague JJ, he will show you how you can query, transform, and visualize the data from lake. Over to you, JJ. So far, we have explored how you can configure Export to Data Lake from Finance and Operation app and explore how the data get stored in the data lake and updated by service as the data changes in the application. The question is how you are going to query this data to do data transformations and build reports. In this section, we are going to explore how you can query, transform, and visualize data from the data lake. There are many technology that can be used to query, transform, and data from the data lake. If you are using Azure Data Platform for your BI and reporting, you may be familiar with this architecture diagram, also referred as a data modern data warehouse. Now, once the data is in the lake, you can use various compute engines to query, transform data, as you can see in the middle box. And finally, use Power BI to visualize and build reports. So let's go through each of these compute services in the Azure Data Platform and see how what the key features, key highlight is, what the skill set you need, and how that can be helpful. So the first in the list is uh, Synapse Analytics. And if you look at the first features of this is the Synapse Pipeline or Azure Data Factory. It's a code-free data integrations in ETL platforms. It has many connectors and which including on-prem system and similar to SSIS. A use case of this is you can uh, use this for data ingestion and data transformations as a low code uh, visual tool, which you can use to do the data ingestions from external systems or on-prem systems and bring into the lake and even use it to transform the data. Sparkpool is integrated with the Synapse Analytics and Apache Sparkpool is a very popular big data platform. It can be used for data preparations, data engineering, and machine learning. The skill set you probably need if you're if you're good with the coding in a Spark, Python, Scala, including T-SQL, you can use Apache Sparkpools to prep the data and do data engineering and data science works, you know, before this can be uh, used for BI and reporting. There are other options in the Synapse Analytics is SQL pools. So you have two options there, a dedicated pool and serverless pool. Dedicated pool is more of a, you know, enterprise data warehouse and serverless pool is more of data virtualizations layer, which means you can query the data, which is in the lake without moving the data. So use case of this, you can you build enterprise data warehouse or do ETR using store procedures or build logical data warehouse. And the skill set you need is T-SQL in this. Other options you have is Azure Data Bricks, uh, which can connect to the data lake. It's again using the Apache Spark, you know, and open source libraries. It supports Delta Lake. It supports, you know, data virtualization similar to with the lake house architectures. And again, the use cases are similar: data prep, data engineering, uh, Delta Lake, and lake lake house concepts. Again, the languages Python, Scala, R, T SQLs can be used, you know, with the data bricks. Other things you can also see here in the Power BI, Power BI data flow and Power Query can connect directly to the data lake. And you can use Power Query or M to do the, you know, data transformations and data prep for Power BI use case. Many of you, if you have worked in the, uh, the BI world, most common way uh, we have seen the BI and reporting is done is using SQL Server and your Key skill set in that is T-SQL, creating store procedure function and views definitions to query and massage data uh, for the data warehouse needs. So what we are going to demo next, how you can use DCD5 data in the lake and using serverless, how can you use the T-SQL scripts to create your logical data warehouse and build a Power BI report. In this demo, we will see how we can use Synapse analytics SQL serverless pool to query tables, views, and then build logical data warehouse and finally build a Power BI report. Prerequisites for this is you have configured export to data lake service in your FNO environment. You added tables and the tables and metadata get copied over to the data lake and you have created a Azure Synapse Analytics workspace and you have also downloaded the CDM utility which will help create the views and external tables on the data lake. There are two options to 
use CDM utility. One as a console application, another is as a function app. CDM utility is available in on the GitHub under Dynamics C35 fast track implementation assets under CDM fold util fo solution folder. So to download that, uh, you can go to the uh, GitHub page and download the console app. So in this demonstrations, we are going to use the console app. However, the documentation is there to help you configure as uh, CDM util as, a, as your functions, and it can automate further by using the event grid to trigger the CDM view creations on the Synapse. So once you download the CDM util and extract the zip file, the things which you have to change is, you know, the app settings. Uh, so CDM util console add dot config file you have to change to provide your parameters. Uh, so so the key parameters which you need to provide is the tenant ID, access key to access your storage account where data is uh, data and metadata is stored. Uh, the manifest URL is the parent path of the the CDM metadata. And in this case, it's a table.manifest.cdm. You can also point to a individual CDM.json files if you want to process individual tables. But if you provide the table level manifest, it will recursively find all the tables under that and process them. And then next is your Synapse SQL Server list uh, credentials. So this is the connection string to connect to my Synapse workspace. Other uh, notable options in this, which we are going to use in the de option of process entities and 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 also AXDB connection string. If you want to process entities and build a logical data models in the Synapse using the CDM util, uh, you enable this uh, process entities to true and provide the, your local AXDB. It could be a cloud hosted or a tier two environments uh, database uh, where uh, all your entities exist and the tool will basically connect to AXDB to extract the entity information and uh, the view definitions of the entities and dependencies and then create those as a view definitions on Synapse. So I have downloaded the tool. Let's see this in actions. This is what I the config file you will see here. This is what we have to change. So what I have done is change these configurations already pointed to my access keys and provided uh, the target DB connection string and all these configurations. To process entities through CDM util, what you have to do is to provide the list of the entities, the name of the entities, data entities, which you have to process. So in this case, I have provided, um, you know, the list of the entities. The key is the name of the entity SQL view definitions. But in this, if I leave it blank and have the AXDB connection string, it will go and retrieve the view definition from there. To build a logical data warehouse, if you look here, I have created uh, some logical views on top of these entities and tables, which I have listed. So I, I pro, I'm providing the, the view definitions of these data models, uh, customer dim, company dim, you know, and the fact tables and, and what the util is going to do. It will process the tables. It will process the entities and at the end it will, um, the SQL definitions on top of this to create final logical data warehouse in the Synapse serverless pool. So. To see how it works, all you need to do is to, once you have con configured, is to run the CDM util here. And what it's doing is, it's basically going to the table folders and reading the table manifest and then finding out all the tables and getting the uh, metadata definitions created. And once that is done, it will start creating a DDL statement on the Synapse serverless. So as you see, it's progressing, it's processed with the tables, it's processing entities, and then it will also create the logical data models, which is provided in the, the, the file entity list file in, in the directory. So as part of this process, when we executed the CDM util, what it did, it created the table as a view definitions using the open row set, and then all the entities which I have listed in the entity list file is also get created and all the views definitions is there. And I it also create the dim and fact tables which I have listed as a SQL scripts. So if you look at this, if we go in details of how these views are constructed, if I go uh, to asset group and script this as a create or alter, this is what I get. Here, so as you can see, uh, the CDM util has extracted the metadata 
from the CDM files and creating these view definitions using open row set. Now, if I uh, have to query this data, I can just simply say select star from, you know, asset group and I get the data returned. I also, uh, if I want to create a final data models, uh, which are created on top of all the tables and entities, uh, and I can query this data, you know, and if you look at the view definitions of these, uh, these are basically the views on tables. So this is, this is the logical data models, which we created. Now with this, what I can do finally is, you know, I can query the data using SQL Server Management Studio for ad hoc queries and understand how the data is. And and then I can also build Power BI reports uh, on top of this logical data model, which I have created. So if you can see here, you know, if I go to the edit query options and look at the advanced editor here, I'm connecting to this serverless pool from Power BI and, you know, connecting to the database and importing the data in Power BI. And that's how this report is built. Thank you. Thank you, JJ. Steven, over to you next for some implementation guidance. Export to Data Lake is a new feature. As such, it is important to understand some of the patterns that should be used, and just as importantly, understand the empty patterns that should be avoided. Having data in the lake opens the opportunity to leverage data in new and more convenient ways. Some of these ways will be appropriate for the usage. However, some may prove problematic. As such, it is important to become familiar with the patterns and anti-patterns for using the data. Looking at the patterns first, enterprises are moving towards modern data warehouses in the cloud. This allows customers to leverage the features that are now synonymous with cloud computing such as scalability, accessibility, improved performance, and more data storage. Next, the data lake is a great location for building out analytical reporting. The ability to store vast amounts of data and curate that data and present it in numerous ways using various tools empowers customers and partners to leverage their data in deeper and more comprehensive ways than ever before. As well as that, Customers and partners can use the data in the data lake for operational reporting requirements. Customers will have access to raw tables, so they won't need to build or customize entities to export data to BYOD, and they won't need to rely on SSRS reports that need a deployment of Dynamics 365 to make them available in production. The ability to store data in the data lake makes mashup reporting a logical pattern to leverage. One scenario where this could be used is with AX upgrades. Customers could export their historical AX data to the data lake and then mash up data with current data from D365. As customers have pre-existing data warehouses, for example, on-premise databases, exporting data from the data lake to pre-existing data warehouses is another pattern for customers and partners to consider. Finally, in our list of patterns, there are a set of customers that are using BYOD for analytical reporting, and they don't require incremental updates. They are in a prime position to consider switching from BYOD to the data lake. Regarding anti-patterns, customers and partners should keep in mind that the current version of the export to data lake feature is a periodic full push of data. As such, any integrations that rely on near real time should be avoided. Data will be updated in the data lake on a regular basis. However, there is no relationship with what business process or event caused that data to be updated. Thus, if a customer has a requirement to action and integration in relation to a specific event occurring within Dynamics 365, they should look towards leveraging business events or di within Dynamics 365 rather than looking to see what data has been updated in any specific table. Reports that require transactional consistency should be avoided because when data is sent to the data lake, there may be transactional inconsistencies. These are the same type of inconsistencies that can occur when using BYOD. For example, 
sales table records might be exported and a few minutes later sales lines might be exported. However, if users have created new sales orders and new sales order lines, after the sales orders have been exported, the sales lines that are exported might not have sales order headers until the next refresh. Additionally, if users are still adding sales order lines after the sales order lines export has completed, then those sales order lines won't be added to the data lake until the next refresh. All of this should help convey that one size does not fit all. The data lake is not the answer to all reporting and integration requirements. Microsoft appreciates that this is a very new feature for Dynamics 365 customers and partners, and we will continue to provide guidance on patterns and anti-patterns in which we hope to provide more detailed guidance and examples, which we hope you'll be able to use to leverage the data lake and keep customers happy. Security is a very important topic, and this Tech Talk does not provide enough time to cover it in the detail it requires. Therefore, we will briefly touch upon some security considerations and continue to include more detailed information on security in subsequent Tech Talks, training material, and online docs. <laughs> The data lake is deployed within a customer subscription, as is BYOD. Therefore, it is important that customers take the necessary steps to secure their data. The data lake has numerous security components or features available, including Microsoft Defender, identity management features, networking security features, logging and monitoring. How customers decide to structure their data lake and the data within will play into the overall security design. For example, some customers might want to read directly from the raw tables for all of their reporting requirements, while others might want to curate the data and move a subset to another location, or there might be a hybrid approach depending on the reporting requirements. Whatever the design, customers should adhere to the concept of minimal access. Additionally, Customers should take into account the consumption layer, as this consumption layer provides the ability to secure the data as well. For example, using Azure Synapse or Power BI to secure the data. As mentioned, we know this hasn't even scratched the surface. However, it is important to start the conversation on security, one which Microsoft will continue. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Next, back over to JJ, who will share some more detail on current capabilities and future plans for this feature. Thanks. Now let's look at the what is available today and what the future roadmap looks like. In terms of what is available today, so export to data link with periodic export is generally available in US. Canada, UK, Europe, Southeast Asia, East Asia, Australia, India, and Japan. So if you have finance and operational environment in any of these regions, you should be able to use that in your production environments. So near real time update or trickle feed features is available on public review. So you can try out these features in sandbox environments. In terms of future uh, roadmap, we, we continue to add additional regions where the service is not available. So if you have a finance and operations environment in any uh, region where it's not available, let us know through the survey piece, which is available on the doc page, and we'll prioritize those regions and add those regions in the future. We expect that near real-time updates will be generally available. We are also working on a business events story on the status of the table export. So with this, you can monitor your export to data lake features as well as trigger downstream pipeline based on the status of the tables. Enhanced metadata that lets you export additional metadata details, such as descriptions and in key shape in the lake, uh, plan to be available as well in the coming months. Next, transition entity stored data processing in the lake will be available as well. This features you will be able to migrate your aggregate measurements or entity store star schema models and do data processing in the lake. So if you're using entity store 
today, we have three data aggregate measurements in star schema and FNO. You'll be able to use the definitions and then we'll provide tooling how you can cook data in the lake. In fact, there is a GitHub page already on that, how you can do that. So you can try that features out. We'll refine that solutions more in the coming months and we'll publish more documentation on that. Next, so for the next one, if you're familiar with the Synapse, a link for Dataverse, this provides simple click-through experience to select the tables. So we plan to bring the same user experience for FNO export to data lake service. So it's easier to configure and select tables and add tables from the modern UI. For the next, a built-in integrations with Synapse Analytics. So today you saw in the demo was the data in the lake. You have to use a CDM utility to create tables or external tables. So in the future, we'll provide built-in integrations with Synapse Analytics. So once tables are exported in the data lake, if you choose to use Synapse, these tables will be available automatically in the same. So Synapse link for Dataverse already have this capability and will bring this to finance and operations as well. Further update on the roadmap and announcement will continue to publish in the release plan. So blog post and we'll also have a lot of discussions in the project group on this. So if you have not joined the Yammer group and project group, I'll encourage to join in and stay updated with the roadmap. We'll also plan to do more tech talks in the coming month to get all, all of you updated on the various way how other users are using Export to Data Lake service and any future updates. Thank you. All right, thank you, JJ. So finally, uh, we've got some additional resources here for everyone to review. Uh, many of these are linked earlier in the presentation and have been referred to, but there's an overview of uh, the various export to Azure Data Lake features, installation instructions and configuration information, as well as information on the, uh, the preview features. Uh, Please do check out the fast track assets and under the the github link there for analytics that's where you'll see the cdm util and the other tools that that jj had referenced there's additional information on security that that steven was referring to there's a ton of information out there on azure synapse analytics and finally the yammer group is a fantastic place to catch up on all of the information associated with this feature so with that said I'd like to open up the floor to our panel here to address any questions that uh, we might want to highlight from the very lively uh, Q&A that has been going on. JJ, are there any questions that uh, you would like to discuss or highlight? Yeah, uh, thanks, Rich. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, there are a lot of questions. We we are actively uh, answering those questions as we go, uh, as we were pro progressing with the um, um, with the demo uh, and we'll continue to answer, but I think uh, uh, maybe uh, in this Q&A sessions now we can focus on some of the remaining questions which are not answered yet and, and try to provide some answer to that. So one question um, I would like uh, if Meninda can answer this, how can we secure sensitive data like employee salary, bank accounts, employee personal details, CTC? Melinda. Take uh, that yes. Hi, JJ. Um, yeah, I think um, it's it's very important to secure data in the lake. So in fine from export to data lake feature, the data that is exported to the lake is um, stored or put in a very rich folder structure by subject area, module, table type. So you have a hierarchy of files that can be secured. Now, in terms of securing them, you need to go into Azure portal and use the storage uh, security features such as role-based access, conditional access, and so on. So once the data is in the lake, you can secure them using the way uh, storage, uh, uh, the way uh, the methods and means provided for storage. In the future, we do want to, uh, uh, we're working on a feature where depending on the sensitiveness of the data, sensitiveness of the data that you specify in finance and operations, the system can hide that data or rather not send it to the lake. So that feature is also available. Um, so you can choose that feature 
so that depending on the security settings, it will not go to the lake. But if it does go to the lake, then you can use storage uh, features that are available in Azure Storage. Yeah, thanks, Mananda. And also, I think one thing I also I like, like the you can also go with the minimal security principle uh, when the data is in the lake. You can you can maintain that like no users, real users, have access to data in the lake, and also control all the security through from the presentations layer, such as Synapse or Power BI in your case, to secure what kind of information, what kind of report is accessible to what users, and access from. Uh, you know, the consumption layer to the storage layer can be maintained through service accounts uh, and service principle kind of concept. So you don't have individual users doesn't have access to raw data, but at the same time, you know, you're securing the access to the reporting of uh, uh, access to the data through reporting layer. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think uh, other questions I see uh, any things to note when converting from Azure BYOD based Power BI reporting to a data lake based one. I think that's a good question. Um, and many of our customers are in this sport like where they have developed uh, you know the BYOD report uh, reporting solutions based on the BYOD. And the one thing when when you transition from the BYOD to data lake based reporting, uh, the one fundamental difference is we are exporting tables, uh, and and we are exporting entity as a definition. So it's make it easier to get the same shape as BYOD entity in the lake if you are using Synapse as a layer, which can create entities as a view. However, I think you have to be careful with the kind of performance because some of these entities are very complex and, uh, you know, in BYOD, those are already materialized. Uh, in, in the lake, those are not materialized, you know. So you may have to think uh, how you can materialize that data in order to gain the right performance. Um, in some cases, it might be, uh, you know, the entities may be your logical layer to do the, the final transformations in the star schema model. If that is your destination, then you can use the entity layer to, to simplify the relationship and things like that. Um, and then, you know, materialize the, your star schema model and finally refresh the Power BI report so that, you know, you can use that, continue that. So definitely there is a little bit POC work needed to understand that how, how, uh, how you can replace BYOD, but the transition should be smoother with the, you know, with the entity definitions. Uh, you can play that on the Synapse layer. Uh, uh, what is the plan for embedded Power BI dashboard report? Is the intention to redirect the data source to data lake? Melinda, do you want mind taking this? Yes. Hi, JJ. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, certainly. If you have created reports using Entity Store, I know many of you have. Uh, our intention is to let you transition to the data lake, you know, with a very minimal effort. So um, we are working on a set of tools and guidance with a few customers at this point. We do want to share those tools and guidance uh, in the coming months with uh, with you with the hope, hope of making it available um, for everyone to use. Thanks. Yeah, I think uh, some other questions I think I can quickly address. Uh, availability in Saudi Arabia, I think uh, um, geo-local regions uh, with FNO, um, some of these regions where the FNO, uh, finance and operations is available, services is not available, we are we have a survey link on the doc page where we are collecting uh, you know, uh, demand and based on that we'll prioritize and, you know, add additional reason in the coming uh, uh, month. Uh, so stay tuned on that, uh, you know, uh, but feel free to uh, uh, use that survey link to uh, to let us know that what reasons uh, your environment is and you're interested in. The next one is, is a recurring bad job exposed to data lake supported? Um, I would say like recurring bad job, 
uh, exposed to data lake is, is not something, this is for the integration scenario. So that's not the intent of the export to data lake service. Uh, you'll use that recurring data badge job exports for integration scenario. This is more for uh, export to data lake is exporting the tables data. It has nothing to do with the DIXF framework uh, as such, you know, so it will, you'll add tables and um, it's the way you can consider this is it's a read only copy of your tables in the lake, um, you know, and we keep it refreshed and updated. Uh, do you guys see any uh, rich sort of, do you guys see any other uh, uh, notable questions which we want to highlight and answer? Mm -hmm. One of the recurring questions, JJ, has to do with uh, with speed. Can you speak to the uh, the speed of the exports and, and maybe the impact that that might have and, and maybe in comparison to BYOD? Yeah, I think that's a good question. So the... Uh, Export. I think the, the the first I will address how it is different from BYOD uh, in terms of its speed and impact to the the transactional database. Uh, so export to data lake features we we mostly use the read only secondary copies to copy the data from your finance and operation environment to data lake. So that way the impact wise it doesn't put. Uh, much workload on your transactional database. Also, uh, in terms of uh, the speed of the export, um, you know, we have optimized it to to a great level, uh, you know, uh, since we have uh, started the service. Um, our internal, uh, you know, some of the tests, what we have seen is, you know, if when you're doing, the way you can think about the speed is when we are doing the, uh, when you add the tables, first it uh, initializes the table, you know, which means it does the full export of the tables. And let's say if you have, uh, you know, um, 100 million rows, in some of the testing, what we have observed is like it's doing, you know, uh, a million rows per minute kind of things, you know, uh, for it varies by table by table, but, uh, you know, within few hours, even if you have large tables like, you know, um, 300, 200 million, uh, 300, 400 million rows in tables. Uh, in within few hours, it, it get exported uh, in the lake. Um, with near real time, we are exporting, uh, you know, we are incrementally exporting and updating the data. So our service level objective there is, uh, you know, within 10 minutes, the data will be updated. However, if you have a large number of transactions happening in the FNO in a table, within a uh, few minutes, it might take longer than the 10 minutes, but, you know, with the near real time update, you know, we are expecting to hit that uh, SLA in, in majority of the case, uh, SLO in majority of the cases. And then near to real time update is in the preview at the moment. It's not generally available, just reminder. Excellent, thank you. Well, that's all the time that we have left for today. I really want to thank uh, JJ. I want to thank Melinda, Saurabh, Antoine, Stephen, Sammy, everyone who contributed to uh, pulling this information and pulling this information together and uh, performing the demonstrations. Thank you all for the time. Thank you all for the attendees. I would like to hand it back over to David or Brad who can uh, tell us about the survey. Thank you, Brad. I mean, uh, Rich. I've posted a link to a short survey in the Q&A panel. We'd like your feedback on today's session and hear what you'd like to see in future events. Thank you for your participation. As a reminder, the recording of today's session will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters and audience for joining us today.